Ladies and gentlemen, from Rusuji Reaction, this is the Fermi Paradox 2 Solutions and Ideas. Where are all the aliens? Where are all the aliens? The universe is too big and too old. Why have we not met aliens yet? Yeah, because I don't think, you know, I don't think we, uh, we, we've had this kind of an advanced technology for a long time to detect aliens by ourselves. Why haven't aliens visited us yet? Maybe they did a long time ago and they just realized, oh, look at that, they are all primitive and just went away. Or maybe they are just the same level as us or even below that. So even they can't find us, who the hell knows. Do they live in computers? You know, were they wiped out by an ancient super intelligence? Damn, that's scary. Or are we just too primitive to understand their motives? Whatever the answer is, it is incredibly important for our own future. This is by the channel Kos Gazat in a nutshell. Yeah. I mean, th th this is such a, you know, uh, interesting topic that you could think a lot of ideas and all of them could be true. Like maybe they, are, they were so intelligent and so, you know, just uh, above everything that they saw us and they just thought, look at those idiots. Chaos everywhere all the time at war, destroying their planet. Screw that. You know, uh, we are not going to touch that and just walked away. Maybe they came long time ago when we were basically, you know, cave dwellers. And at the time, uh, you know, they just saw us and like, okay, they are just like animals. They had nothing, so just walked away again. Or maybe, even though they are really intelligent, they are in some far away galaxies, they even they don't have technology to come here yet. Because we just assume being you know, super intelligent and old and uh, having a great technology just means that they can just, you know, travel between galaxies like it's nothing. It's not that easy. What if warp drive and things like that is not real? Then it becomes hard to travel between galaxies, isn't it? So it could be anything. This is by the channel Koskaza Nutshell. I wrote quite a few Koskaza videos already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cards as a playlist. I go to for it. Koskaza Reaction. Check out the playlist too. Like Real Life Rose, CGP Grey, Holy Sarcastic Production, Internet Historian, Tier Zoo. And yeah, let's watch this one. This is Koskaza video. It might get blocked. So I'll put check out box there where the video is. If that's an issue, uh, check out the link in the description with the original video and play the video side by side. And yeah, let's watch this one. There are probably 10,000 stars for every grain of sand on Earth in the observable universe. We know that there might be trillions of planets, so where are all the aliens? This is the Fermi Paradox. If you want to know more about it, watch part one. Here, we look at possible solutions to the Fermi Paradox. So, will we be destroyed or does a glorious future await us? Space travel is hard. Although possible, it's an enormous challenge to travel to other stars. Massive amounts of material have to be put into orbit and assembled. A journey of maybe thousands of years needs to be survived by a population big enough to start from scratch. And the planet might not be as hospitable as it seemed from afar. It was already extremely hard to set up a spaceship that could survive the trip. An interstellar invasion might be impossible to pull off. Also, consider time. The universe. <laughs> that's that's how the Mass Effect Andromeda start, isn't it? They assemble the massive ship in the space near the moon, and wherever they are, you know, other aliens do at a different locations. Then they send out those ships to Andromeda, and this is same type of mentality. People hated that game, but I didn't hate that game. It was fine. It had issue at the start, but it got patched. It was fine. People expected it to be just as good and just like the original trilogy. I never play game assuming that. That's the issue with Assassin's Creed 2. People hate Origin and Odyssey for the same reason that it's not the Assassin's Creed 2 or 1. It's not the Ezio. It's not the same game, man. It's different. It's same universe, different game. Enjoy it. So I love how Mass Effect, you know, uses all this and apparently that's kind of realistic. This is very old. On Earth, there's been life for at least 3.6 billion years. Intelligent human life for about 250,000 years, but only for about a century have we had the technology to communicate over great distances. There might have been grand alien empires that stretched across thousands of systems and existed for millions of years, and we might just have missed them. There might be grandiose ruins rotting away on distant worlds. 99% of all species on Earth have died out. It's easy to argue that this will be our fate sooner or later. Intelligent life may develop, spread over a few systems, and die off over and over again. 
way, yeah. but galactics. I mean, that's uh, you know, that's one of the Fermi paradox issues, isn't it? When we become multiplanetary species, when we know how to go to another planet and basically spread out like that, just like how in on Earth. Basically, you know, European countries, all the countries fought each other because of because for land. They colonized places. Then, you know, colonization became hard because everybody claimed places. Then they fought over it. So same thing would happen in space. I mean, you know, you would think that there are so many planets, but uh, when it comes to human ambition, even those planets are not big enough. Eventually, we would populate the entire galaxy, our own galaxy, and then we fought, we might fight over each other to acquire some planet maybe somebody like the bigness and just prettiness of a planet and they fight over that so you know just our nature would be something that we became a giant civilization colonized entire galaxy and then kill each other off that's one of the filters too civilizations might never meet so maybe it's a unifying experience for life in the universe to look at the stars and wonder where is everyone but there is no reason to assume aliens are like us or that our logic yeah. applies to them. It might just be that our means of communication are extremely primitive and outdated. Imagine sitting in a house with a Morse code transmitter. You'd keep sending messages, but nobody would answer, and you'd feel pretty lonely. Maybe we're still undetectable for intelligent species, and will remain so until we learn to communicate properly. And even if we met aliens, we might be too different to be able to communicate with them in a meaningful way. In I mean, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Our planet was formed. It was just at the right place. So life could start. Just the right, right events has to be there, like extinction event, for mammals to come out. Everything has to be perfect for us to be here. And tune us to what we are. So there is no reason that another life would be anywhere close to like us. It could be completely different because there are so many variables that could change that. Imagine the smartest squirrel you can. No matter how hard you try, you won't be able to explain our society to it. After all, from the squirrel's perspective, a tree is all that a sophisticated intelligence like itself needs to survive. So, humans cutting down whole forests is madness. But we don't destroy forests because we hate squirrels, we just want the resources. The squirrel's wishes and the squirrel's survival are of no concern oh, oh, to us. Sad. A type 3 civilization in need of resources may treat us in a similar way. They might just evaporate our oceans to make collecting whatever they need easier. One of the aliens might think for a second, Oh, tiny little apes, they build really cute concrete structures. Oh well, now they're dead, before activating warp speed. But if there is... Is that Mass Effect reference? Oh, I love this channel. That is a Mass Effect reference. Look at that reverse. Alright. This reminds me of that Neil deGrasse Tyson thing that he constantly says. You know, that, uh, you know, do, do you stop and try to wonder what a bug on the floor thinks? Like, you see a bug on the floor. Hmm, I wonder what that bug thinks. No, you don't think that. You just step on it and move on. So, there might be a really smart intelligence out there who transcend our capability like a ma it, with a massive margin. They might see us as that bug. They might just come and take whatever we want and not care about us like he says or even kill us because we are pests or something. So, you know, uh, th that is just scary to think like that is a genuine possibility. Or they might be so smart the concept of killing something is just too primitive for it. So, you know, it, that, that civilization might just basically, you know, uh, just go away, like, okay, screw it, you know, there are other resources in the universe, let them be, and never contact us, because we are beneath them or something. I mean, we have a really marginal DNA difference between chimpanzee and us, and you can't explain any level of basic science to chimpanzee, let alone advanced science. So even a you know, small percentage of DNA difference, if that alien has, just like we have from the chimpanzee, that alien would be ridiculously smarter than us. That alien would look, us, look at us just like we look at chimpanzees. So that's just, that's just scary. Is a civilization out there that wants to eliminate other species, it's far more likely that it will be motivated by culture rather than by economics. And anyway, it would be more effective to automate the process by constructing the perfect weapon. 
a self-replicating space probe made from nanomachines. They operate on a molecular level incredibly fast and deadly, with the power to attack and dismantle anything in an instant. You only need to give them four instructions. One, find a planet with life. Maybe these machines are the being themselves. Maybe these machines kill uh, any species that come, emerges every 50,000 years. Maybe these machines' names are Reaper. Life. Two, disassemble everything on this planet into its component parts. Three, use the resources to build new space probes. Four, repeat. A doomsday machine like this could render a galaxy sterile in a few million years. But why would you fly light years to gather resources or commit genocide? The speed of light is actually not very fast. If someone could travel at the speed of light, it would still take 100,000 years to cross the Milky Way once, and you'll probably travel way slower. There might be way more enjoyable things than destroying civilizations and building empires. An interesting concept is the matryoshka brain, a megastructure surrounding a star. A computer of such computing power that an entire species could upload their consciousness and exist in a simulated universe. Yeah, I don't know about that. Again, you know, uploading consciousness. We don't know what consciousness is. Can we upload consciousness? Or are we just uploading a copy of us that thinks that is us? And, you know, when we die, we die. And our copy just lives on in the computer. And that's not us. Nah. Potentially, one could experience an eternity of pure ecstasy without ever being bored or sad. A perfect life. If built around a red dwarf, that. this computer could be powered for up to 10 trillion years. Who would want to conquer the galaxy or make contact with other life forms if this were an option? All these solutions... Yeah, I mean, that could be just copy of us. Just like how in, basically in GTA 5, Los Angeles City. That's not real Los Angeles City, is it? It's just a, you know, severe graphic version of Los Angeles City. Just like that, whatever computer program we upload, maybe that's just copy of us and not really us. We didn't, we didn't transfer our consciousness, we just made copy of it. ...to the Fermi Paradox have one problem. We don't know where the borders of technology are. We could be close to the limit or nowhere near it. And yeah. super technology awaits us, granting us immortality, transporting us to other galaxies, elevating us to the level of gods. One thing we do have to acknowledge is that we really don't know anything. Humans have spent more than 90% of their existence as hunter-gatherers. 500 years ago, we thought we were the center of the universe. 200 years ago, we stopped using human labor as the main source of energy. 30 years ago, we had apocalyptic weapons pointed at each other because of political disagreements. In the galactic timescale, we are embryos. We've come far, but still have a long way to go. The mindset that we really are the center of the universe is still strong in humans, so it's easy to make arrogant assumptions about life in the universe. But in the end, there's only one way to find out, right? Hey everybody, we finally have our own... Yeah. So yeah. I mean, we are kind of young in the universe. People think, oh, okay, the universe is 13 billion year old. We are, our planet is 4 billion year old, you know. So, we are not that young. But compared to what? Billion is not that big of a number. When you consider that white dwarfs live for trillions of years. Black holes live for, I guess, Google years. 10 to the 100th power. And, you know, the universe is going to live at the same level, if not more. So compared to that, billions is nothing. So we might be the early civilizations. Or if there is another civilization that is even like 4 or 5 billion years older than us, the level of technology that we are talking about, you know, achieving that might require even longer time, maybe trillions of years. So who knows? Maybe intergalactic uh, travel and communications, the technology that we would need requires trillions of years rather than, uh, you know, some billion. Who the hell knows? But yeah, that is something, isn't it? Alright people, that was the Fermi Paradox. If you like my Rick's and don't like and subscribe, check out the Rick's and did this link in the description, check out the cast, check out the end cards, and I'll see you next time.